Very good morning to you, Mika. Uh, now, this is a story so many of us watched in horror, those events that unfolded in the images of the devastation there. And this is very close to, to you and your family, isn't it? Tell us a little more. Um, sure. Uh, I mean, like so many around the world, when I saw those images on August 4th, my heart completely sank. I think the reason is that, I, I mean, I was born in Beirut. Uh, my mother's Lebanese-Syrian. Um, but I think it brought back so many memories, so much civil war, so much political strife over so many years. And seeing this kind of catastrophe just unfolding and that video that circulated across social media really brought back so many traumatic memories for so many people around the world. Lebanon has already been going through a very rough time lately, uh, political strife, uh, inflation, an economic crisis that was spiraling out of control. This was the last thing that that country needed. Nika, the news agenda is such that sometimes, you know, those appalling pictures are fresh in the mind, but, you know, we, we haven't heard much since then in a way, you know, certainly in the UK. What do you know about, how the, you know, as things, the days and weeks are passing, what the impact is? The image was, uh, as often with social media, the imagery at first was so strong and uh, connected with so many people around the world. But in the past few weeks, it's been hard to ascertain exactly what the situation is. Apart from the fact that Lebanon has been going through such a hard time. And so this was really just it, it exacerbated so many of the existing problems from the crisis they're going through, apart from COVID, which is also a problem there more than ever now. Um, but I think just to put it in perspective, the 200 people that died because of this, 6,000 that were directly injured, there are 300,000 people with homes that are not fit to live in at this moment. There are, uh, in the midst of a crisis where there are more than 560,000 Lebanese children who are struggling to survive. Put it all together and, and we realize also the food shortages are, are, are something else to take into consideration. The fact that Lebanese uh, Beirut, at least, hospitals are not accepting people in most of them, and they're having to send them out to other places outside of Beirut. These, uh, Beirut, at least, hospitals are not accepting people in most of them, and they're having to send them out to other places outside of Beirut. Help is definitely needed. Um, and, you know, the Lebanese community is, is, a, is a particular one. I was born in 83. We were evacuated, uh, and we ended up in Paris. Then I grew up in London. Um, and I have to say that so many Lebanese are spread across the entire world. We took with us a part of our culture. We took with us uh, bits of Lebanon and we kept them. You walk into a Lebanese house, even if someone's half English, half Lebanese, and you know they're Lebanese. Mm. You smell it in the food. So it's just, it's, it's kind of provoked a really strong emotional response to people who are partly Lebanese, but it's been a little bit harder since the explosions for others to understand really what's going on over there. And Mika, you are using the platform you have to highlight what's happening and, and speak very eloquently about it here on this programme, but also with this performance that you're putting on yourself, um, you're producing the show, you're going to be broadcasting as well. Is it from your kitchen? No, it's <laughs> not from my kitchen. Um, although I could have, I mean, it, was, it became very... I wanted to do anything I could, even in a small way. And I think that this show is trying to do two things. It's a live stream show. It'll be on the 19th of September. Uh, with all the restrictions from COVID, in the end, I decided to produce it myself with my friends and do it in my garden. I'm currently in Italy right now because I'm filming a new show because my tour uh, got cancelled and my life has changed like so many other people's. And I'm, I'm going to go do some television where I am here now in Italy. Um, but the objective of this show is obviously to raise money. We're going to be raising money for... Um, with the Red Cross Lebanon and also say the children of Lebanon, but also to tell stories. So it's not just an intimate live stream show. There's also going to be footage from Lebanon. There's going to be people coming in telling stories. There's going to be performances from other artists. And it's just about provoking empathy as well to help uh, people connect with the stories of people who have been affected by this disaster. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of people raising money. There's a lot of international aid, but it never hurts to uh, provoke more empathy and to create more of an emotional connection with mm. a disaster that's happening quite far away. Mika, it's really good to talk to you. Good luck with the performance and the production of it Thank all. You. Thank you so much for talking to us this morning. It's lovely seeing you. Um, Thank you Mika's very much. Mika's I Love Beirut Benefit concert is going to be live streamed on the 19th of September. Tickets go on sale on Monday.